poetry is my hobby. Today's story took place last fall. Paul Arno, the lifelong friend of mine, called me on the phone to report a murder. At the moment, Paul was unaware that only a few hours previously, his wife, Brenda, had had an unexpected caller. Yes? Hello, Pop. Now, don't tell me you're the great Paul Arno. I beg your pardon? Look here, you can't come bursting in this way. Who are you, anyway? I asked you first, Pop. Who are you? I'm Robert. Mr. Arnold Butler. But... <laughs> well, what do you know? Toots did all right for herself. Toots? Sure, Toots. You mean you never heard of Toots? No, naturally not. There's no one here by that name. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa. Toots would Bobby. like... Toots. Well, I'll be a cross-eyed lizard. Say, if you ain't Tony, a pretty... Tony, please. Huh? What's the matter? Tony, we're not alone. Oh. Oh. Oh, I, I get it. <laughs> It's Nib there, I tell your old man. Huh? If this person is annoying you, Mrs. Arnold... No, no, I... no. It, it's quite all right, Robert. You may go. But, madam... You may go, Robert. Very well, madam. Well, what do you know? Could you have done that like a lady? Yes, sir, you've done it just like a lady. I am a lady, Tony. Huh? <laughs> a lady, eh? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Put Take it easy. <laughs> this is Tony Irwin you're talking to. Remember? When did you get out, Tony? Oh. So that's it, huh? I got you worried, eh, baby? Oh, oh no, You're Tony, thinking no, that I'm sore because I come home and find you married to this panty weight. Uh... And why should you be sore, Tony? That's what I was saying to the boys just this morning. The boys? Yeah. Some of the boys said, uh, Tony, you ought to be sore at foot, they said. But why, Tony? Why? That's what I told them. Why? I says... How did Toots know that I was going to get sprung after only doing a couple of years? Tony, please. Double cross? <laughs> no, sir. I laughed at him. Why, I says Toots wouldn't double cross nobody. I didn't double cross you, Tony. Sure, sure, sure you didn't. That's what I'm saying, baby. You wouldn't double cross nobody. I'm glad you feel that way, Tony. You bet. <laughs> baby, I'm proud of you. <laughs> you got class. I uh, always figured you'd make the grade if you got the break. Yes, Tony? I ain't like some guys. Some of them boys... <laughs> you know what they wanted me to do? What? <laughs> Take that Chuck Pizarro, for instance. <laughs> There's a character. Well, what did Chuck say? Why, he says, look, Tony, don't be a dope. Toots is in a chip, he says. Look, he says, she used to be your girl, didn't she? Okay, do one up and clip her for a few hundred bucks. <laughs> She'll never miss it, he says. And what did you say, Tony? Nothing doing, I told her. Not me. I ain't that kind of a guy, see? Thank you, Tony. I ain't that kind of a guy, I says, who'd stool on a friend. Not even if she, uh, did double-cross me. Tony, I didn't. So what if Toots would pay off to keep me from telling about the weekend we spent together? Tony, that's not so. <laughs> sure, 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 it ain't. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, this Paul Arnold don't know it ain't so. What do you mean? Oh, well, it's like this, baby. Suppose this Paul Arnold was told you used to be a birdie you dancer. Oh, Tony, you wouldn't. Suppose he got to know about you and Jerry the Duke in that nightclub raid. Oh, Tony, please. Suppose he told and was told about you and me and I showed him some pictures. Paul wouldn't believe you. He'd throw you out of the house. The way I figure it, baby, Arnold could check them things. He'd find they was true. Then, when I mentioned about that weekend... Stop it, Tony. Stop it. <laughs> uh, what's the matter, baby? What do you want, Tony? Want? Me? <laughs> not a thing, baby, not a thing. Yes, you do. What is it? Baby, you got me all wrong. You know, I wouldn't put the bite on you for nothing. Of course, since it's uh, getting along towards Christmas. Oh, I see. Very well, Tony, I'll give you a Christmas present. Ah, swell, baby. Swell! Wait! The safe is over here behind these curtains. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. No, you don't. I'll just go along, too, huh? Maybe you got some ideas about uh, telephoning? Hey. Ah. <laughs> this is a kind of a cute idea, ain't it? Go back where you were, Tony. I'll not... Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of a cute idea. Big, heavy curtains hanging on the wall, just like there wasn't this little alcove behind them. If you think I'm going to open this safe with you watching me, you're crazy. Yeah, kind of cozy, too. 
just big enough for us two. Tony. Tony, don't look at me like that. Come here. Tony, you just keep your hands off me. Come here, come here. (laughs) Just us two. Like it used to be. Come here. Take it easy, baby. Take it easy. Maybe we can make another deal. What's that? There's someone... Hey, who turned off the light? Yes, Drake speaking. Hello, Bart. This is Paul Arnold. Paul Arnold. Well, well, Paul. It's good to hear your voice. How are you? Right now, I'm not so good, Bart. Hmm? There's a dead man lying in my living room with a bullet through his heart. What? Yeah, he was murdered. Murdered? How do you know? Well, my wife was standing beside him, and my butler was standing in the doorway and saw it. My sister was in the hall and heard it happen. And by the way, there's a guy here named Danton who's accused practically everyone of making it happen. Danton? Not Inspector Noah Danton. That's the guy. Know him? <laughs> yes, yeah, slightly. Tell the inspector, Paul, that you've talked to me and I'm uh, on my way out. And don't worry about him. Uh, the old boy's bark is worse than his bite. <laughs> Hello, Bart. Hello, Inspector. Come on in. Thank you. I'm waiting for you. You got my message, huh? No, Inspector. What message? What message? Didn't the babe call you? What babe? Arnold's sister. I was busy and I asked her to get in touch with you. I thought she did. I'm sorry, Inspector. I haven't heard a female voice in a matter of hours, worse luck. Oh, no? Then how'd you know about this murder? How do you happen to be here? Paul Arnold called me. Arnold? Why, that... Hey, what's he think he's getting away with? Hello, Bart. Glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, Paul. It's been a long time. More than a year. I've been in the service, you know. Yes, I certainly do know. <laughs> Wasn't I at your going away party? <laughs> what a time. Uh, pardon me for interrupting. You two gents don't happen to know each other, do you? Paul and I are old friends, Inspector. We've known each other for years. We were roommates in college, Inspector. Well, isn't that sweet? Unless somebody thinks up some excuses mighty fast, somebody's going to be cellmates in Sing Sing. Now, look... Always the man of duty, eh, Inspector? By the way, have you identified the corpse? Sure, it was a punk named Tony Irwin. He was doing a stretch for grand last, and he got let off for good behavior. I see. And what was Tony Irwin doing here? Well, obviously, his motive was robbery. His body was found lying near the wall safe. Yeah, and there was a gun lying beside him with one bullet discharged. Look, Bart. Come over here. Yes, Inspector. You better come along, Paul. Yes, I think I'd better. Your friend, the Inspector, has ideas. (laughs) And I can guarantee you'll have a lot more before we get much farther in this case. Yes, Inspector? You see these port tiers hanging against the wall? Yes, yes, I see. Look like decorations, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. Okay, now I swing them out like this on that crane they're hung on, and what do you see? Well, well, a dead man on the floor, a gun beside him, and a small safe fitted into a sort of an alcove. That's right. Now, when I got here a couple of hours ago, things looked exactly as they do now. Well, and what have you been doing for the past two hours, Inspector? What have I been doing? I've been lining up the suspects. I've been waiting for you. I've been looking oh, for... All right, Inspector. All right. Now, who are your suspects? Well, Mrs. Arnold admits being right here when it happened. Now, just a minute, Inspector. Brenda didn't do this. You can't Keep say... your shirt on, Bob. I didn't say she did it. I only said she was a suspect. How did Brenda happen to be here, Paul? Well, she came into the room and saw a movement behind the curtain and decided to investigate. Mm-hmm. What happened? This Tony, whatever his name is, was tinkering with a safe. Just as Brenda looked behind the curtain, the lights went out. There was a shot. Brenda screamed and ran out of the room. That's her story. Now, look here, Dan. Never mind, Paul. The inspector sounds much worse than he means to. Oh, is that so? Inspector, now... have you checked the fingerprints on the guns? That's being done now. Mm, How about the safe? What about the safe? Well, uh, if Mrs. Arnold were telling the truth, as you seem to doubt, Inspector, Tony's prints would be on the safe. Huh. That's right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, I'll have the boys check. Good. And uh, tell me, who are your other suspects? Roberts the butler, for one. Why? He claims he heard Mrs. Arnold talking with someone in here. Just as he opened the door, the lights went off. Roberts says he saw someone standing near the door to the hall across the room. Then the shot came. Mm Hmm. Did Robert see where the shots came from? Yep. He says the guy that was standing near the other door fired it. But he didn't recognize the other party. No. He only got a glimpse. Inspector, why do you suspect Robert? Because he must have been lying. That gun right there is the one that killed Erwin. Oh, you're sure of that, Inspector? Sure, I'm sure. You know, I don't make idle statements, Bart. <laughs> no. <clears throat> Whom else do you suspect? Arnold's sister, Agatha. Why, oh, that's ridiculous. Aggie's so scared of firearms, she won't even look at one. Yeah? And why didn't she call Drake when I asked her to? I'll tell you why, bub. She's a guilty party, and she knew that if Drake got on the job, he'd prove she was guilty. Inspector, let's not make idle statements, remember? 
Paul, it looks to me as though you're the only one that's in the clear in this case. Yes, and I'm sure I wouldn't be if I hadn't happened to be on a plane coming back from Boston at the time the murder was committed. Oh. That checks. I called the airport. A Paul Arnold left on the plane that took off from Boston at 6.30 p.m. He couldn't have gotten here before 9 o'clock, and the murder took place at 7.30 p.m. Well, thanks for that much, anyhow. Don't mention it, Bub. We always aim to please. And stop calling me Bub. Bart, it seems to me your friend, the inspector, is determined to make a complicated plot out of a purely simple case. Yeah, well, Bart, it seems to me that your friend, Bub Arnold, is talking out of turn. What's simple about it, Bub? Well, anyone with any sense wouldn't ask. This man, Irwin, is an ex-convict, sent up for larceny. Obviously, he came here with the idea of robbing my safe. Okay, so then what happened? We already know what happened. Someone shot him. See what I mean, Bart? Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> I'm sorry, Paul. The inspector is right. Fine. Why Tony Irwin this here is unimportant. Somebody murdered him. It's the inspector's job to find out who. Okay, I guess you're right. The only thing that we're sure of is that you are not the guilty party because you were on that plane. Well, Brenda isn't guilty either. I appreciate how you feel, Paul, but still the inspector... I beg your pardon, sir. Yes, Robert, what is it? Uh, there's a Mr. Harrison on the phone, sir. He'd like to talk to you. Harrison? I don't know any Harrison. What's he want? Well, he said something about a ticket, sir. A t- oh, oh, yes. Of course. I, I'll talk to him, Robert. Very good, sir. If you'll pick up the extension... And no, I'll... I'll take it in the library. Very good. Excuse me, Bart. Right. I'll be back in a minute. Take your time, Paul. No hurry. Harrison, he doesn't know him. Inspector, what are you doing? I'm listening in on that conversation over this extension telephone. Inspector, gentlemen, don't do that sort of thing. I'm not a gentleman. I'm a cop. Well, at least keep your hand over the mouthpiece. I've got my hand over the mouthpiece. Ah. Something interesting, Inspector? Yeah, something very interesting. Well, I'll be... Well, Inspector. But how good a friend of yours is this Paul Arnold? Well, the best. I've known him for years. Think he's on the up and up, eh? Yes, yes, I gamble. That's too bad. Why? Bart, I hate to tell you this. Arnold wasn't on the plane. What do you mean, he wasn't on the plane? That guy Harrison that Arnold was talking to, he used the plane ticket that Arnold bought. He just called to thank Arnold. But Paul Arnold was here in New York at the time Tony Irwin was murdered. Because I think it'll be best for both of us. Oh, then, then you stopped loving me. Oh, no, Paul. Well, what else am I to think? Well, I'm not very proud of my past, Paul. Among other things, I... I was a dancer in a burlesque show. And you're ashamed of it. Oh, no, no, I'm not ashamed. I I did nothing to be ashamed then of. Then why? Because... Because I met you, Paul. Because I fell in love with you. Because... Because I wanted so desperately to have you love me. And I knew that that Paul Darnell could only fall in love with a lady. He did. What? I said, Paul Arnold did fall in love with a lady. You're that lady. I'm trying to be kind. You're pitying me. I can't stand pity. No, I. No, no, look, Brenda, listen to me. I've known for the last three months about, well, about your past. You, you've known? Yes, sure. Tony Irwin called on me. He told me all about you, even threatened blackmail. And you didn't believe him? Well, I found that everything he told me was true. But why didn't you tell me, Paul? Why should I worry the girl I love with something that was completely unimportant? Oh, Paul. Oh, there, there, you poor kid. Kiss me, Paul. Hold me close. Oh, darling, what a fool I've been. No such thing. I should have warned you. Irwin waited until things quieted down, then tried his blackmailing stunt on you. That's why I didn't go to Boston. I was worried. You... You didn't go to Boston. No, at the last minute I had a hunch. I gave my ticket to a man named Harrison at the airport. In fact, he just called me on the phone to thank me. Then, then you were here when... When When Irwin was shot? Yes. I came in the back way just as the shot was fired. But you didn't... Shoot Irwin? (laughs) No, darling, I didn't get the chance. Someone beat me to it. Paul, listen to me. Does Barton Drake know that you weren't on the plane? No, why? Then you've got to tell him, Paul. If he finds out that you were lying... Nonsense. Let Bart have his fun. But it isn't only Drake, Paul. It's it's Inspector Danson. Oh, Paul, can't you understand how important this is? Drake's clever. He might prove that that you... Brenda, you don't think that I... 
<laughs> oh, darling. Come here to me. Listen, Bart's my best friend. Don't worry about him. And even if I did kill Tony Irwin, I've got the best alibi in the world. <laughs> But hmm? when are you going to give up and admit that your friend Arnold is the guy we want? Why should I, Inspector? Why should I, he asked. Because all the evidence we've uncovered points to his guilt, that's why. What evidence, Inspector? What? Uh, now, look, Bart, I'm a patient man. You know that. Yes. Paul Arnold had a motive. He wasn't on that plane and... And we're keeping that knowledge to ourselves, Inspector. I don't want Paul ever to suspect that we broke his alibi. Oh, you don't? This isn't a game, you know, Bart. Just because the guy's a good friend what of yours. What other evidence we the points to Paul's guilt, Inspector? His sister knows we were he, he was here, for one thing. Mm. I just talked to her. She admits that that's why she didn't do as I asked and call you. Because she thought that Paul had shot Irwin? Sure. Hmm? She didn't want to see her own brother go to the chair. Oh, Inspector, that's weak. Very weak. Oh, yeah? Well, there's the gun lying beside the corpse. From which the fingerprints have been carefully wiped. So far, you haven't mentioned anything that would stand up in court. Okay, right? okay. How about the fact that no fingerprints were found on the safe? Mm, yes, that proves that Mrs. Arnold was lying, doesn't it? She just said she stepped around the curtain and saw Irwin tinkering with the safe. Yeah, but if you just let me talk to... You want to see me, sir? Yes, Robert. Will you ask Mr. and Mrs. Arnold to step down here, please? Yes. Thank you. Now, Inspector, what was it that you were about to say? I was going to say, if you just let me talk to Arnold, I... <laughs> You'd sweat it out of me, Inspector. Well, how are you going to find out if a man is guilty if you don't ask him any questions? Well, you'll get your chance to ask questions in a very few minutes, Inspector. I will? Mm-hmm. As soon as Paul and Brenda get here, I'm going to have the crime reenacted. That ought to be fun. I can hardly wait. Now, let's not be sarcastic, Inspector. I'm not only... Hello, Paul. Brenda, come in, please. But, uh, Brenda and I have just had a little talk. There's something we want to tell you. I'm sorry, Paul, but that'll have to wait. We've something more important to do now. now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If the guy wants to talk, let him. It's really quite important, Mr. King. I'm sure it is, Brenda, but it'll still have to wait. Inspector, will you ask Roberts to step in here, please? Now, listen, Barnard. And, Inspector, will you also ask Paul's sister, Agatha, to stand in the doorway to the dining room? That's where she claimed she was when the shot was fired, wasn't it? Sure, but... Fine. Hurry along, Inspector. We'll have everything ready by the time you get back. Okay, okay, only I'm more used to giving orders than taking them. <laughs> now, Brenda, if you'll stand over there near the curtains in the exact spot where you were when the lights went out. I will. Only if you'll listen to what Paul has to say. I'm sorry. What Paul has to say, we'll have to wait. Now, wait a minute, Bart. This may change your whole outlook on the situation. I'm sorry, that's impossible, too, Paul. Listen, I appeal to you. If Brenda won't cooperate... He'll I cooperate if he wants a dog on rude. I'm sorry. There are times when a man in my position has to appear rude. Not to my wife, you don't. Whose wife it is doesn't matter. It does in this case. Now, listen, All Bart. All right, Robbie, inside. Now, just a minute, Inspector Denton. Pipe down, Gramp, and do as you're told. Denton, take your hands off, Robert. He's done nothing. Well, now, what's happened to the big, happy family I left a few minutes ago? Never mind the white cracks, chum. Father, I thought you were a friend of mine. Friendship ceases when murder's involved, Paul. Now listen to me, all of you. You're going to do as I say, or Inspector Danton will take the three of you down to headquarters and lock you up. Now you're talking my language, Bart, old boy. Uh, so this is when I get when I ask a friend to help me out. Oh, so what's the use, Paul? If this is the kind of person Bart and Drake is, and what we have to say won't matter anymore. Brenda, you're 100% right. All right, all right. If it's going to make you any happier, what do you want us to do? Thank you, Paul. Brenda, will you uh, stand over near the curtains, please? Yes, all right. This is where I was when the shot was fired. Fine. And where was Irwin standing? Directly in front of the safe. Hmm. How were the curtains arranged? Well, they, they were halfway open. About like this. Thank you. Stay there, please. Now, Robert, if you'll just stand uh, here in front of this door. I beg your pardon, sir. Yes? It, it wasn't near this door that I was standing when I saw the shot fired. It was over there near the library door. Yes, I remember your thing. So, however, if you don't mind, I prefer that you stand here. Now, look here, Bart. If you think that Robert's had anything to do with Irwin's killing, you're crazy. He's been with me for years. We'll go into that later, Paul. Inspector, where's Paul's sister, Agatha? She's out in our hall near the dining room door, bored. But look here, sir. If it were Miss Agatha, I mean, the dining room door is right behind where I'm standing. I, I mean... Well, what do you mean, Robert? Are you implying that Agatha mur murdered Tony Irwin? Oh, no, sir. Of course not. Then keep quiet. Say, everyone's getting mad at everyone, aren't they? Mm. Paul, will you go over and stand near the door to the library, please? Okay. So now I'm standing here. What am I supposed to do? Look over towards the curtains. Can you see Brenda standing behind them? Sure, I can. They're half open. Excellent. All right, Robert. 
Tony Irwin was supposedly standing in front of the safe, farther back in behind the curtains, when you stepped into the room. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's mm-hmm. correct. Now, Robert, I want you to raise your hand as though you had a gun in it. Point it in the manner you claim to have seen the figure point it and fire. Yes, sir. Uh, the figure was standing here. He aimed deliberately. Good heavens. Well, Robert. You... You tricked me. The guy has got a gun in his hand. Hey, someone turn off the Look light. Look out, Agatha. He's coming at you. <laughs> Where did he go, Inspector? Tell this door. Come on. Right. Let go of me. It's Agatha. He's holding her in front of him. Hand back for our shoot. So are I. Look out, Inspector. You'll hit the girl. Let me, brother. All right, Robert. You got one chance. That does it. <laughs> you blundering idiot. You hit Agatha. No, I didn't. I hit Robert. Nice work, Inspector. Come on. Agatha. Agatha, are you all right? Yes, yes. I'm all right. Is Robert dead? Yeah, he's dead, lady. Inspector Danton never misses. <laughs> time that it was Roberts, how about it? No, no, I, uh, I only suspected. The thing that puzzled me is the fact that he had no particular motive. But he did have a motive, Mr. Drake. Oh? Roberts knew that Carl and I were happy. He apparently overheard my conversation with Tony Irwin and realized that our happiness was being jeopardized. Roberts has been in our family for years. He was just being loyal. You know, I, I wish somehow we could repay the debt. Well, I think Roberts would feel repaid if he knew how things had turned out. Yes, I, I suppose you're right, Oh, Carl. Oh, no, no, darling. Can I say something? Yes, of course you can, Inspector. All I want to know is, how did you know that Roberts was it? Well, well, that's a fair enough question, Inspector. Roberts said he glimpsed a figure standing in the doorway that led to the hall. He said he saw that figure take deliberate aim and fire. I get it. Anyone standing in the doorway leading to the hall couldn't see the two people standing behind the curtain. Ah, that's right, Inspector. Roberts, standing in the doorway of the library, could see them plainly. So he assumed that the figure could see them, too. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, how did you know that... uh, this figure just didn't fire blindly and hit Tony Irwin by mistake. Oh, Inspector, I'm ashamed of you. Because if he had, there would have been a bullet hole in the curtain. Now, wouldn't there? Yeah. <laughs> and there wasn't, was there? No, 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 there wasn't. By the way, Paul, what was it that you and Brenda were so anxious to tell me a little while ago? Oh, I, well, but it, it really doesn't matter now. Well, no, it, it isn't important at all. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's... It had something to do with my alibi. Bart, it would kill you if you knew. It would, eh? Hey? Uh, Bart, shall we tell him? Absolutely not, Inspector. I told you I'd like Paul to think I that... don't mean that. No, what do you mean? Tell him, you know what? Huh? Maybe they won't think they were so gall darn smart after all. Oh, I see what you mean, Inspector, yes. Paul, whenever you think of how you put one over on Barton Drake, just remember that mystery is my hobby.